Hi, everybody. It's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com, and this is a special research alert all about a new innovation in cardiac imaging for bicuspid aortic valve patients. I'm thrilled to be joined by Michael Markle, who's a professor and vice chair of research at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. I am so excited to learn about all the exciting things coming out from your research. But first, a question for you, Michael. What is your role there at Northwestern Medicine? Yeah, thanks, Adam. Uh, I'm actually a physicist by training, and I'm now a research professor in the Department of Radiology at Northwestern University. And I uh, had a research group, and our goal is uh, really to develop new imaging technology for the improved uh, diagnosis management uh, and therapy management of patients with heart disease and stroke. And, you know, uh, heart valve disease and heart valve surgery is a, is a very important area of research to us. Let's talk about the new research that was just published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology, the Cardiovascular Imaging Subjournal. What were you studying? Uh, it's about uh, buying one of our uh, novel imaging technologies that we've developed at Northwestern that we call 4D flow MRI in patients with bicuspid early valve disease. Maybe to give you a little bit of background, uh, bicuspid aortic valve disease is the most common birth defect in the heart. It affects 1% to 2% of the population. Now, what's interesting about uh, bicuspid aortic valve disease or BAV disease is that it can lead to serious complications such as dilatation of the aorta, which might then uh, lead to the need for surgery. What's really interesting here is that Although all the patients are born with the same heart defect, not everybody develops that kind of complication. So one of the questions that has always puzzled cardiologists and cardiac surgeons is, why is it one group of patients develops complications and why is it another a group of patients doesn't? So this study actually goes at addressing this question. And the hypothesis is that the kind of abnormal valve causes changes in blood flow in the aorta. Michael, thanks for the context of BAV and the issues that could be happening with the aorta and 4D flow MRI. And let's talk about that. Can you share some of the findings that came out of your research? With 4D flow MRI, we're actually able to measure the 3D blood flow in the heart and the aorta of those patients. And we then went on analyzing this data and what we actually found that if we applied 4D flow MRI in patients at a certain uh, point in time, we could identify a new biomarker that would identify those patients who are at risk or at higher risk to developing aortic dilatation and such complications at six to seven year follow up. So, this was a longitudinal study where we looked can we measure something when the patient first presents at the hospital that would tell us more about their risk for complications later in life? And we actually did find this new biomarker, and it's called wall shear stress, aortic wall shear stress. And it turns out if you have more of this wall shear stress in your aorta, you're at higher risk uh, for aortic dilatation, which may eventually lead to the need for surgery and valve repair in those patients. I was curious to know if you could share a little bit more about the biomarker wall shear stress. Wall shear stress is actually a quantity that measures the drag force of the blood along the aortic wall. So you can think of it like, you know, blood going through your aortic valve. And if you have a bicuspid aortic valve, it's a bit more narrow. So the flow is accelerated through that valve and then it hits the aortic wall. And wall shear stress quantifies that force. And it's actually known, been known for a long time that changes in shear stress can impact how the aortic wall remodels or gets more disease. And then the higher the wall shear stress is, the more likely it is that you develop aortic complications. And that's exactly what we found in this study. That what's new here is really that for the first time, we were able to measure it in vivo in the patient with this novel imaging technique, 44 MRI. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this actually shows the result of uh, a 40 flow MRI scan in a healthy control on the left and a BAV patient in the middle. And what you can actually see here is blood flow streamlines in a healthy control and the BAV patients. And the color coding here represents the blood flow velocity. So red means fast flow and green and yellow flow means slower flow. And what you can actually really nicely see here a healthy control has very cohesive parallel streamlines that reflect normal blood flow, whereas the BAV patient in the middle layer has a very pronounced flow jet through the valve that kind of hits the aortic wall. 
And this is probably even more evident if you look on the right, which is the same as in the middle, but a, a video that shows the blood flow over time, where you can very nicely see the development of this high blood flow velocity jet in red that hits the aortic wall. And again, the, the theory here is that with these new technique, we can visualize and measure these flow velocities. And as you can see, the jet hitting the wall is exactly the indication of you know, the changes that happen in, in bicuspid aortic valve disease that can lead to aortic dilatation. With all this new novel utility of 4D flow MRI, how is that gonna help the heart team manage patients with bicuspid aortic valve disease? So we believe that, you know, with these new measure that we have watch his stress and these new imaging techniques, we now have a much potentially a much better, better method to define early on who might be at risk for developing complication. So for the care team, that actually means if a patient comes to the hospital, if they do this test and they early on in the life of these patients see there's a higher risk of potentially developing these complications, they can adjust the management plan for that patient. They can say, oh, maybe this patient needs to be compact for monitoring this every year. And we need to be very carefully monitoring the size of the order of that patient. Whereas somebody else may come in with normal wash assess, they may say, well, we can come back in five years and we'll, we'll check again. So it really is a tool, hopefully, to better manage patient and plan ahead kind of for uh, the remainder of their lives, pretty much. I mean, again, you know, bicuspid aortic valve is a birth defect. So it's something you carry within your life. And you really want to kind of plan ahead and, and manage that care as efficiently as possible for the patient. Michael, this is absolutely fantastic that you're taking an innovation and making it a real world tangible utility for heart care teams to help their patients. And on behalf of those patients, I want to thank you and the entire team there at Northwestern Medicine. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for having me. It was really a pleasure to be with you and talk about our research. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our team. Uh, that's actually very high cross-disciplinary and consists of like physicists and engineers like me, but we really rely on the collaboration with cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, and other clinicians. And I'd like to you know, give a big thanks to everybody who has contributed to this research. Yeah, I can only imagine that all the imaging work that you're doing there, it is a team sport. And I can't thank you enough for reminding us about all the folks who are part of this extraordinary research. So again, thank you and congratulations, Michael. Thank you, Adam, pleasure. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.